Greetings ladies and gentlefish and welcome to this pair of subscriber replays and in today's video we're going to take a look at a pair of tier 4 tanks that are not particularly well liked uh, generally speaking this is the M3 well we're going to look at both the M3 Lee and the M3 Grant they're to all intents and purposes the same machine it's just once it's in the American tech tree and once it's in the British tech tree but they're basically the same tank um, we're kicking off with the Grant, the British version. This is being played for us today by Mac. Um, so why are these tanks not particularly well liked? Well, in terms of playing them, it kind of comes down to the fact that they're big targets with kind of dubious armour. Um, and although they're classified as medium tanks, they don't have a fully rotating turret. Or at least not that works in the game. You can see up the top here does actually have a fully rotating turret with a 37mm gun in it, but that's not the turret that you get to use, or the gun that you get to use in the game. In the game you get to use the Sponson mounted 75mm gun. Now in the case of the Grant, you also have the option of mounting a 6 pounder 57mm gun, which gets higher penetration, but I'll be honest that gun's kinda cruddy. Um, it relies on a very high rate of fire and takes forever to aim, so it's just horrible to use. I would recommend using the 75mm gun on the Grant, personally. Now, this kind of skewed um, gun sponson position, it's a bit like the 87 for those who have ever played it. It means that you want to preferentially come around corners in one direction. Let's imagine, for example, Imagine, for example, that you wanted to try and shoot someone. If you can just poke the sponsor, the very right-hand side of your tank, around a corner, your opponent has very little to shoot at. Um, so if you want to turn around a corner, uh, turn around a right turn, or it's actually a left turn, you can do that. If, however, you want to come around a corner the other way, then you actually have problems with having to expose huge amounts of your tank before people can shoot you. Um, and so you preferentially want to come around the corner one way compared to the other. Now I mentioned the armour on the tank is kind of underwhelming, and that's true. And of course this is a tier 4 machine, it will see up to tier 6s, which will make mincemeat of this thing. But, ooh, near miss from artillery there. But against kind of the little auto cannons and pop guns that you get on a number of tier 3 and 4 machines, and of course tier 3 are the weakest opponents this thing will see, apart from foul matchmaking, um, then you can actually get some bounces off this thing. Now this is an Electo, this is quite a dangerous proposition here. The Electo flubs his shot however. Don't know what gun that guy's using, there are three perfectly viable guns to use. He's using the 25 pounder. Um, now in that, the 25 pounder, it doesn't have quite the alpha clout to deal with the M3 Lee in that sort of situation. Oh hello Mr. Stug. But it can still perfectly well do a lot of damage. And you can see here, if you're coming around the right-hand side of this corner, you can do some good work if you can hide most of your tank. But Mac actually takes a couple of penetrations there regardless. That was not a good engagement. Uh, the previous engagement was not a good engagement for the Electo. The Electo is very lightly armoured and really wants to deal with its opponents at range, if it possibly can. Point blank, not so much. You're not in a Hetzer. Anyway, while I've been rabbiting on, the Mac and his team have been racking up a rather impressive kill tally, and the scoreline is 13-8. Four of those kills are indeed Max. Now he's on low health here, so he's just letting the Stuart go forward, do the spotting for him, and he is then going to put fire into the guy, which is, like I said, he's on low health, so that's um, fair enough, really. There's the artillery. He gets spotted out as he nukes the friendly um, douchebag wagon 2. And here's the inaccuracy on the gun coming through. Now the gun is inaccurate, but for tier 4 it gets respectable penetration, respectable alpha damage, and actually a blistering rate of fire, making for very, very high DPM. So Max trying to get a shot on this SU-85B. Not really being successful, however, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but the Stuart doesn't really want to poke around there, because the SU-85B can end him, assuming he's got the top gun. Top gun on that tank gets 160 alpha damage, which is enough to two-shot Mac, and with something stupid like a four-second reload, five-second reload. So despite the nerf that Tier 4 Tank Destroyer has received, that thing is still a murderous little beast. But this guy's not going to be able to hold out forever. As long as the friendly team aren't completely dumb, 
then this shouldn't be a problem. And Mac is certainly not an idiot. So he's telling the steward just to hold on. He's on his way. Even though Mac only has 17 health, he basically needs to land, what, one shot on this guy? This SU-85? Maybe two. Um, but if they can catch this guy on the hop, two of them at once, they should be able to wreck him. There he is, 52 health. That's one shot. There's the back of him. Auto aim. Execute. Game over. There we go. Ended up being a fairly nice result in the grant. So let's go and have a look at the results for this one. So there we go. That was enough for Ace Tanker, Bruiser, uh, Fighter, Duelist, Fire for Effect, Shell Proof because of all that auto cannon fire. Looks like a cool headed medal and high caliber. 1,311 damage done, 5 kills, 931 base experience, most damage of anyone in the game, most kills of anyone in the game, most XP of anyone in the game. 20 shots fired, 15 hits, 15 penetrations for that damage count, most of which was from actually from relatively close range. And because of all that auto cannon fire, Mac actually bounced almost 600 damage with his armour. That's not the sort of performance you can generally expect from this tank, but occasionally it can happen. 15, almost 16,000 credit profit. So there we go, there's a nice little outing in the M3 Grant. Now let's switch things up and move from the British machine to the American machine. Here we go then, moving on to the second game, and this is in the American version of the same tank, which gets an additional turret on top of the turret. No, the which you use. You still use the hull mounted gun, but whatever. This is being driven for us today by Razor 10. He's in the ELC clan, which is a great name for a clan, by the way, just because the ELC is such a fun little machine. Um, again, he's in a tier 4 maximum game, so he's top tier, and that really is where this tank performs the best, I think. Uh, and he is here on... Wide Park? Yeah, Wide Park. This isn't a map that you see that much anymore, generally speaking, because they changed it to be only available at the mid-tiers. Not even lower mid-tiers, just the mid-tiers. Now... Razor is actually being a little bit cheeky here. Um, oh, and there's the terrible shell velocity coming into play. Uh, he's up on this sort of ridge line um, and putting shots into these guys. But the the cheeky bit is that you have a very um, high profile on this tank, and he's exposing himself a lot to get these shots off and taking relatively little damage for it. The first bit of damage he actually takes is from the enemy, or one of the enemy M3 Lees, firing high explosive of all things, because HE does more damage. I mean, that's these lower tier games for you, I guess. Um, now, Razor trying to get a shot on some of these fellows. There's the T28. It's a stock T28, the poor guy. Um, so, I mean, fully upgraded, that thing actually gets a relatively good gun, but when stock, not so much. <laughs> Uh, takes track damage only from the uh, Czechoslovakian medium there, the STVZ-39. Haven't gone down the Czech tanks yet, sorry, the Czechoslovakian tank line yet, so I don't really know the machines that well, I will be honest. Eventually Razor will be able to land another shot on this T-28, but he really doesn't want to spend too long aiming, understandably, because that just leaves him exposed to a lot of return fire. And he takes track damage there again from the Czechoslovakian tank. Decides to burn his repair kit rather than sit out there in the open, which is entirely understandable. Gets a bit lucky that uh, Czech tank bounces on him. And now he uh, tracks the guy. Puts another shot in. Can he finish the fellow off? Yes, he can. So there's kill number two. As he'd already picked up one kill earlier on from the Panzer. T28 there is actually not exposing an awful lot of his tank. Um, Razor's going for the turret, as that's what he can actually see, which is fair enough. Gun bounces that round, which I did not expect, but he does finish him off for kill number three. There's a Panzer B2. Panzer B2 gets relatively good armor for a tier four. Um, but this gun gets 90-something penetration. 92 penetration. Now you can see here that Razor does actually have 15 rounds of APCR to go with it which get 127 pen. I imagine that's mainly for the tier 6 games that this thing will see, just to try and have a little bit more penetration to do your thing, or the tier 5 and 6 games. Now, so far, he's got 3 kills, 716 damage that we've seen. Um, 
and the scoreline is even at 10 kills apiece. He's taken an awful lot of blind shots this game, which is the main reason why he's only got five rounds of armor-piercing ammo left. There's the T-40, very dangerous machine. You know, it's another tier 4 tank destroyer to watch out for. Two more shots to take this guy out. Oh, no. Um, now, there's one. One more. I don't know how he hasn't taken a shot from this T-40 yet. That T-40 is very dangerous regardless of which gun he's using. But somehow Razor doesn't take fire. And now he's down to armor-piercing composite rigid because he doesn't want to be firing HE. And he's used all his armor-piercing ammo. M8A1 is a quite a dangerous little machine, the uh, American turreted tier 4 tank destroyer. But nonetheless, uh, he manages to put a shot into him. Now, as I say, Razor is being very liberal with his use of ammunition here, which, generally speaking, I don't have a problem with, because the M3 Lee has a very, very fast reload. But considering how much ammo Razor has left, um, I think aiming his shots toward the end would probably be um, a good plan, just to make sure that he doesn't run out of ammo and that he can actually um, bring this game to a conclusion. You don't really want to be stuck, forced to fire high explosive against something like an A20, when the high HE only gets 38mm of penetration. And he actually switches to the HE against this M8A1. The M8A1 does not get fantastic armor. And if you can use the HE, it's a cheaper option um, than using the APCR, and slightly more economical with his available ammo. Manages to take the guy out, um, takes a round in the rear from the A20, still has this HE loaded. Now against the A20, I can't actually remember the armor values on the A20. I'm not sure this is the right choice, I think he'd be better off with the armor piercing rounds, and indeed he does actually switch back to the AP rounds himself. Well, APCR of course, that's all he's got left. STVZ39, gone round the side, and dies for his troubles. A20 pokes out again. Uh, Razor was prioritizing getting into cover there, which I totally understand. That shot was never going to hit. I don't really know why he took it. There we go. And now the A20 is a one shot. And now the A20 is a no shot. And that's the game. Um, so let's go and have a look at the post-battle results. So there was the game from Razor. Ace Tanker, perhaps unsurprisingly. Bruiser, Duelist, Fire for Effect, Shellproof. Um... High caliber, had a bit of a brain fart there, and the Top Gun medals, and were you paying attention to how much um, Razor actually got there? It ended up being 1,783 damage, so one or two blind shots hit, and eight kills. The only reason this wasn't a Radley Walters medal is because this is a tier 4 machine. And 1,374 base experience. Now. 42 shots fired, of which only 25 hit, 21 penned of those hits. So when Razor hit the target, he penetrated, but there were a lot of blind shots, and some shots taken when the gun was nowhere near aimed. Uh, and a couple of shots that were just plain unlucky. Most of the damage was from relatively close range. Received 10 hits, of which 6 bounced for 315 damage blocked by his armour. Um, 10 enemy vehicles damaged, 8 of them killed, 100 assistance damage into the bargain. Unfortunately, because Razor fired so many rounds and because he was therefore forced to fire a bunch of APCR rounds, with a standard account he would have lost 9,000 credits. With the premium account he still made a 3,500 credit profit, um, which is not fantastic for tier 4, but there we go. Um, but, I mean, he didn't need APCR in that game, he was just forced to use it because he'd run out of AP. So, these things happen. There we go, a couple of games in the not particularly popular M3 at Tier 4. I hope you guys enjoyed those games. Uh, if you did, by all means, feel free to catch some of my other videos and or subscribe to my channel. And I wish you very happy hunting on that battlefield. Ciao, ciao.